All right, it's almost 2.04, so we're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Uh, thank you for attending today's Fireside Chats, um, how Google Marketing Platform Partners can help your business. Um, first, of, first and foremost, hope everyone out there is staying safe, healthy, and sane. I know, like many of you, I have three kids under the age of seven running around here. So if you hear daddy or screaming in the background, um, please work with me on that. Um, we also have over 250 people that registered for this event. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're only showing two slides just to kind of do the quick introduction, um, show who we are, what we do, and that's it. So please make this as, as engaging as we possibly can, like a real world virtual chat or virtual fire said chat. The questions tab is on the right. So you'll see if you pull out your panel and go to meeting, there's questions. Um, we're going to take those live and both Lori and I are going to monitor. So please make this encouraging and um, let's quickly go through some introductions. Um, my name is Brad Pringer. I lead the partnerships team at InfoTrust, which is a premier Google Analytics and cloud partner. Um, quick background on InfoTrust, we are an end-to-end -end digital analytics consultancy where we really help organizations advance the way they're using analytics to drive more efficient and effective marketing. Um, we're one of Google's premier enterprise partners, um, and I am honored to be here with Lori Kaiser at Google. And Lori, I'll kick it over to you to introduce yourself. Thanks, Brad. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Lori Kaiser. I'm based here in San Francisco, and I'm a Google Marketing Platforms Partner Manager. Uh, so we'll get into some detail about what that actually means. Uh, but I manage a cohort of partners based in North America, such as InfoTrust. Looking forward to chatting with Brad here in a couple minutes and to answer all of your questions today. Thank you, Lori. As promised, I'm going to kick off the slides. It's just going to be myself and Lori, so get used to us. Um, but again, thank you, everyone. I, I did want to call out that I'm wearing a collared shirt. I know all of us are working from home right now. This is a really big deal. Um, I think my kids looked at me a little bit funny, like, Daddy, where are you going? And I'm like, just going to the basement, girls and boys. So. Anyways, I'm going to start, but just to kind of go through the agenda for today is Lori and I are going to go back and forth on some questions that both her and I have um, thought of um, prior to this conversation, because in Lori's role at Google and my role at InfoTrust, we get a lot of questions around the Google Marketing Platform Partner Program, what it means, how it can be used. In addition is when I sign up with a partner, how can they help me advance um, and help me advance uh, the way I'm using analytics, the way I'm using media, et cetera. So I'm gonna kick us off today. I have some questions for Lori. Again, we're gonna have plenty of time at the end to ask questions, but if you have a question as we're talking about a specific topic, please go to the panel and we're gonna monitor that. So Lori, the Google Marketing Platform Partner Program, as I typically have a lot of initial discussions with prospects or even current partners about you know, there's many questions that come to us about what is this partner program? So I just have some common questions um, that I receive just on those initial engagements that would love for you to share with our audience today. So the first is, can you just tell us a little bit about the Google Marketing Platform Partner Program, what it is, why it exists? Yeah, absolutely. So, so to give everyone some context here, uh, Google leverages uh, as I mentioned, Google leverages an ecosystem of partners such as InfoTrust and many others to expand their service offering to marketer and agency clients. So whether you're looking for help for like a single project, it could be a one-off project or a bigger long-term uh, transformational partnership, a Google marketing platform partners have the resources. They also have the expertise, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, to really help you to achieve more with your marketing. So if you're looking you know, for one-off uh, projects or a long-term partnerships, we have a variety of partners that can fit those needs for a variety of challenges across the uh, the marketer ecosystem. Thanks, Lori. One of the things you mentioned is multiple partners. I will say that although I represent InfoTrust today, I'm speaking on behalf of all partners. Uh, we all bring a unique skill set that we'll talk more about later today. Um, but a question that I get quite often is, why are there so many partners? Um, there's partners across the ecosystem, and just would love for to get your point of view on that question. 
tool? Yeah, that's a great question, Brad. And I know it can be rather confusing for clients being as there's so many partners in the ecosystem. So it might be kind of confusing to figure out how to choose the right partner. Um, but we don't want to pigeonhole clients into just having one or two options. So as I mentioned, we do have a variety of partners that span a variety of service offer offerings and capabilities to truly provide uh, a, a vast array of offerings to the ecosystem. Um, and so as I mentioned, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a partnership, if you're looking for a one-off project, uh, we have partners from just certified companies um, that can work on services to sales partners that can also sell you a license and services. And then we have our larger GSI or alliance partners such as like an, a Deloitte or Accenture who really focus on really big, massive transformational projects. Um, so they can do a lot of work on building out, um, you know, architecture on top of our product. So those are a bit larger, right? So really we have a spectrum of partners depending on what it is that you're looking for. And I think also people, it's, people have to understand, although you may be looking for a partner in a specific area, Google plays in many areas um, in digital marketing and advertising. So um, when you think about there's a lot of partners, um, well, there's a lot of partners in analytics, there's a lot of partners in cloud, there's a lot of partners in media, there's a lot of partners that, that cross paths. And you know, just to give everybody perspective is Google hosts all partners at least once a year where we kind of come together and there really isn't a lot of, um, of course there's competition, but it's healthy competition because we all know that we're unique and we're kind of playing in our unique areas of where what, what we believe thinks uh, you know, we're special and how we can help um, different clients in, in the space. So, Absolutely, and somebody had a question, which I think is good. Uh, what products fall into the Google marketing platform? That is great. Um, we should have mentioned that from the beginning. I know we, we at Google are very Google-centric with all of our acronyms, so apologies ahead of time. Uh, GMP is Google Marketing Platform, and there's a lot of products that fall uh, within that spectrum. So um, all of our media products like Display and Video 360, Campaign Manager 360, Search Ads, Google Analytics, Optimize, Surveys, um, Ads Data Hub, um, and then we also do a lot of work with C4M and BigQuery, which are actually cloud, project, cloud products, but they do fall in line with a lot of the, uh, the GMP projects that our partners do. Great question, Dominic. Thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure a lot of folks on the phone today are thinking through, well, all right, I work for an agency. I work for a company. How do we become cloud or how do we become certified uh, whether that's doesn't matter what area how do you become a google certified partner great question and we'll definitely follow up with some links too there's a great uh site that we have available that really walks through all of the requirements um in becoming a partner um, and also if you're searching for a partner it does list out all of our partners that are certified in the global ecosystem so that's a great resource that we'll share with you um, but for any companies looking to become a partner and when i say become a partner um, this is specific to the gmp partner program again because we have a variety of partner programs at google so they are quite different in the requirements uh, that each of them have. So for our GMP partner program, um, also this is referring to a company certification. So that would be the first step if you're looking to do any kind of service uh, projects on behalf of our platforms, you would wanna be a, a certified company. That is also a prerequisite to becoming a sales partner, meaning that you can resell our licenses as well. Um, so there's a couple of requirements. Um, that I can just sort of walk through here and give you an overview of. Um, so we do have policies that you'll need to review and accept certain partner terms and conditions before you apply. So you'll need to make sure that those are right for you and your company, um, just ensuring that overall it's, it's a good fit for where you wanna be and what you wanna do. Uh, secondarily, we have company requirements. So we'll need details on your business, your team size, your structure, 
um, mind you, this is applicable uh, globally. So this is a global program and all of these requirements um, are based on, on, on that, not just regional. So I wanna know a little bit about your services, your pricing practices. We do look for a good track record of client satisfaction and strategic investment in supporting Google marketing platform products. We do look for clear documentation on your client engagement and planning processes including your framework and templates used to design and deliver complex solutions. So you'll need content on your website that describes the services associated with your application and the product supported. Um, and then finally, we do look for product expertise, um, most importantly, uh, or more importantly at least. You must have at least five local full-time experts in that market, in that region that you're looking to get certified in, working with Google marketing platform products. And you must have passed the associated certification exam. So we do have exams for each of our products and you would need to get certified in each of the products that you want to be certified in. Um, when we say full stack certification, that means that you're certified across our media products and our measurement products. So across TV and CM and analytics. Uh, but you can choose uh, one or all of those just depending on uh, of course, your, your expertise and capabilities and how deep you want to go within the Google marketing platform. Um, and then aside from those certification exams, uh, which is great, right? It definitely shows us that you have the aptitude. Um, but we also want to see project samples. So we want to see examples of the work that you're able to do. Um, so each of those samples should uh, represent advanced work that shows strategic planning and optimization towards your client's business goals. So it just really displays your ability to go beyond basic or standard implementations and use. And then it also demonstrates impact on your client's goals through statistics and any kind of client testimonials. Thanks, Lori, super helpful. Two things that I wanted to call out, especially if, if you're an advertiser, an organization that's looking to use a Google partner. Um, so first, if if you're looking to use a partner, sometimes the question we get, you know, and we'll get to this is like, hey, why can't I just work with Google directly? And all the things that Lori just walked through, um, I've been through it with InfoTrust as a part of the team here. It's a it's a pretty intense process. Um, it's something that happens every year. So as an organization, if you're bringing on any Google partner, know that there has been a very, very strict guidelines by Google of testing and certifications and case studies and clients you work with so it's no easy process um, it's not something you just go online fill out an exam you get your stamp of certification so just wanted to call that out because it's it's an every year thing partner certification changes each year um, so know that when you're working with any especially the top tier of google partners that you're getting the best as relates to google's products and services and then from an agency standpoint, another thing that you mentioned is there's a lot of great resources online as far as what it takes to become a partner in any given Google area. Also, if you're looking for a specific partner, let's say you're looking for someone where you want a seat for, for DB360, um, there's filters on there that are very good that you can go in there and select exactly what you're looking for in an organization, and it'll spit out, hey, here are the partners that are right for you. So, awesome. So speaking of the question I just mentioned, um, something that comes up from organizations uh, is around licenses. So licenses to DB360, licenses to Analytics 360, which is Google's enterprise version of Analytics, Optimize 360. Um, why can't an organization just call up Google, call up their Google rep who may be working with them on the media side and just sign a license directly instead of having to bring on a partner? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so Google really, I mean, we build really great products, right? Uh, that's what we do as a tech company, but we're also not a consulting firm. Uh, so we really are focused on our core competencies, which is building the tech and then outsourcing the great uh, services work that our ecosystem of partners can provide to clients. And that actually might be uh, providing more flexibility with contracts, uh, with more support hours, um, with additional partnerships, just being able to be uh, more strategic and also geographic location too, right? Um, is that 
a lot of times clients want a partner that's in the same city as theirs and they can see them you know on site every week or what have you um, so in order to provide clients with the best of both worlds which is the tech and the services that go along with it that's where we've enacted our partner ecosystem which truly are an extension of google right um, as we mentioned uh, it's a rigorous process uh, for us to carefully vet partners that we allow into the ecosystem and we ensure that they're certified on an annual basis um, and they're providing project samples to really showcase the work that they're doing. Um, so with that, um, it should be similar to if you're buying directly from Google being that our partners are an extension of Google. What this allows us to do it at scale, um, we have you know thousands of clients uh, hundreds of thousands of clients really that are using our products across the Google marketing platform and in order to deliver that white glove service and those strategic partnerships that's why we have um, you know 20 plus partners alone in North America that are sales partners we have hundreds uh, globally that are certified companies that can provide services um, and those would be you know agencies uh, as well um, and so with that um, you know, you should be able to pick up the phone and find a partner that can both uh, provide you with a license and services and really give you um, a holistic end-to-end -end service across a variety of products in the Google marketing platform. Um, and, and our partners do have partner managers like myself, right, on the back end. Um, so they really are in contact with Google uh, on a daily basis, if not an hourly basis. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Uh, <laughs> so they really You're are welcome. connected with Google at all times. Lori, we just had a question come up. Uh, is Google Shopping part of the Google Marketing Platform? Uh, Google Shopping is not. So they're part of our large, it's a great question because I know it is confusing being as though we have so many products. So it is part of the larger ads ecosystem, but it is not part of Google marketing platforms. Um, and Google marketing platforms is actually, the terminology um, is relatively new as we've uh, only united the two um, sort of media and measurement uh, platforms or products, if you will, in the past year and a half. Um, so they used to be two distinct uh, partner programs um, and sort of lived a little bit more siloed within Google. And we've really brought those together, just given all of the native integrations within the platform, just to bring uh, the true power of the integrations across all of those platforms together uh, for a unified experience for our clients. Awesome. And I just wanted to touch on one more item as it relates to why go through a partner versus like, why can I go to Google directly? Um, as you know, Lori, I spent six years on the Google side of the house. I was more in the media sale, their large customer sales team. And it's amazing now being over at a certified partner of InfoTrust, just the, the depth of technical knowledge. Um, you have to understand that partners are living, breathing this every single day, every single minute of working with some of the top advertisers and companies, particularly in your vertical where they can share best practices, so they can show you how other organizations are doing it, versus your current Google team may only be focused or specialized in one particular area. So again, it's it's that compliment that Lori mentioned. It's we're an extension of Google. We think and operate like Google as it relates to their products and platforms. And many times we're on calls with Googlers, um, with your, you know, your Googlers that are working on your business. InfoTrust joins them in making sure that you're getting the best of the best um, as it relates to the different Google products and services that you use. On that same point, there's another question here. What makes InfoTrust uh, different from Google Partners? Um, there's a couple unique things that make InfoTrust unique. So again, as I mentioned, we're a premier partner. But more importantly, one of the big decisions that we've made as an organization is we want to be end-to-end -end analytics. So as you're building the foundation from anywhere from an audit implementation to understanding the governance, CCPA, GDPR, all the way into advanced analytics. How do I use BigQuery to do um, advanced modeling and customer lifetime value and intraday forecasting? We've stayed out of the media selling game. So we can set up, we can do implementation, we can make sure the audiences are built correctly, but we have specifically chosen not to sell media, which is very unique in the partner ecosystem or end-to-end -end analytics. 
Um, the second item is um, really around, um, or those are kind of two items, right? One, we don't sell media. Two, we're cloud certified and GA, GMP certified. But the final thing that I'll touch on, because this is not, the purpose is not to kind of talk info trust, but um, the final thing would be just the customer service standpoint is we take every single work, um, partnership or relationship that we have, you have a dedicated team, we want to act as an extension of your team. So we really encourage weekly meetings where we're, we have an understanding of what is your plans the next three, six, 12 months and being proactive partners and that really deep extension of your team. So again, if I had to say one more, it would just be around the governance side. We have an entire customer data governance team that's focused on how do you make sure with CCPA, cookie laws, GDPR, that we're setting you setting yourself up for future success. So Lori, last question, then I will stop bothering. You can kind of ask me some questions from the partner standpoint. Um, any more just advantages? I know a lot of times organizations talk about or there's been a trend of bringing things in house. I'm going to do media buying in house. I'm going to be plan my media, understand my media. What would be maybe some of the benefits of using a partner versus trying to do everything internally in house? Yeah. So I think you know, similar to you know how how Google operates and really focusing on your core competencies. Um, so instead of you know, and it might it might make sense for a lot of companies to really build out a true center of excellence. Um, but as we say, you know, with our partners, you know, you have a variety of options, right? You can you can buy, you can build, you can partner. Um, so you do have options, and that just depends on the company, uh, because our partners work with a variety of clients from our largest enterprise multinational companies um, to smaller companies um, that just might not have the resources or budget or it might not be on the roadmap to really build this in house. So um, our partners do offer uh, this at scale, you know, um, so one of the options being to partner, that's where our partner ecosystem comes into play. So I'd say, you know, some key advantages to working with our partners are, of course, expertise. So it takes a long time to build out a center of excellence, right, especially to the extent of, of uh, the knowledge and capabilities and expertise that our partners do have um, working in the measurement and media space with you know decades of experience um, across a, uh, a myriad of, of platforms. Um, and so I would say it's, it's threefold, right? It's expertise. Um, as I mentioned, our partners are definitely vetted and they have to meet very rigorous standards. So you can definitely trust that you're working with a company who knows our solutions and can provide that expertise that you are looking for. Um, also flexibility. Um, so as I mentioned, right, um, working with a larger company at school and having to go through procurement and things like that might uh, be a very lengthy process, whereas our partners, uh, just being smaller organizations, are really set up uh, to sign licenses at scale um, and can be a little bit more flexible when it comes to uh, those contract terms and, uh, you know, really providing a holistic uh, procurement contract that also includes uh, customer support services, and licenses and if they offer multiple products it could be you know across a variety of products as well in one contract uh, so flexibility there um, and the full toolbox so as I mentioned you know if you're looking for help with just strategy with media management systems integration measurement attribution CRM uh, our partners are definitely the right combination of tools expertise and services so they're pretty much the full package. Thanks, Infotross. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I, I think just a couple things. One, on the procurement side, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've we've been able to bring on new partners in weeks, not months, um, just because we have a lot more flexibility versus trying to go, to, you know, to your point, Google's a large organization. There's going to be kind of hard lines of what you're willing and not willing to do. We have just a little bit more flexibility being smaller than Google. And then two is just the expertise. Our CMO talks a lot of strategy with organizations. Um, he published several articles in Forbes and just a lot of the conversation that comes up is just don't try to do everything. Um, you may bring your media buying in the house, but th does that mean you need to bring every single thing in house? The ecosystem is 
quite large. So make sure that you're doing what you do well best and what your team is capable of doing best, and then bring in partners to help make you stronger and move faster and have that competitive edge. Great. Thank you, Brad. So my turn to grill you on some questions. Sorry, I, I actually have to go. I uh, I hear my kids upstairs, so I got to go. <laughs> um, so we talked about a little bit about, you know, a variety of services that our partners can offer. It really runs the gamut. So can you can you give us a few common types of those partner engagements maybe that you're you're doing today? Yeah, so I, th I think it's first important that um, understand that there's, again, a wide variety of, of Google partners. Um, I put Google partners in three buckets. There's Google analytic partners, there's Google cloud partners, and there's Google media partners. Um, specifically, InfoTrust, right, we're analytics and cloud partners, but we stay away from selling media. But then within that, once you kind of figure out what, what is the right kind of Google partner, it comes down to three three of the most common engagements across all partners. The first one is license. I need a Google license. I need, um, I've hit sampling limits on my Google Analytics free version and I need to upgrade to GA360. That's something you're gonna need a partner for. I'm ready to upgrade AdWords over to DV360. You're gonna need a partner for that. Um, so those are simple things that licenses, you're just going to need to work with a partner in most cases. Um, I know there's um, certain engagements where it would be direct, but far often, more often than not, it's um, partner for it. So I call that a license engagement. There's a need because you're having limitations um, from a free product or platform, and you would need to reach out to partner for that. The next one is project base. So you're working with your team. You have a great, strong um, team that's firing on all cylinders but there may be projects that go a little bit out of their expertise or a little bit out of their scope. So it's either A, I don't have the expertise to do this, or B, I just don't have the time or the resources. I don't have the people to just sit here and do this project for me. So common projects that happen in our space, look, the data being collected on our site is not accurate. We don't trust what we see in analytics versus what we see on our backend CRM. So audit and implementation type work. I need some dashboarding work. Can you quickly fire out dashboards using my um, my visualization? You know, because we only play in analytics, we know multiple visualization tools. We know multiple analytics tools. So that's really a project base where it could be, as you mentioned, C4M, Cloud for Marketing, is, hey, I want you to take my 10 million records and I want you to do some really deep analysis and find me my most valuable and my least valuable, so then I can target my marketing towards that. I'm willing to spend much more money for my top 5% of shoppers than I would be someone who buys once for me and never comes back or comes back once every six months. So a project, um, I think what's important to remember is projects a lot of times also a test both for the advertiser and for the Google partner. It's really kind of given that, hey, we're gonna bring you in for this and we're gonna see how well you fit for us and how well we like the service that you bring. Because most times those projects, the way we look at it is projects are opportunity. It's, it's an interview, it's an opportunity to extend to an ongoing partnership, which is really our third bucket. Very common in this space is I want an extension of my team. Um, again, it, it's a lot of people think of this in FTEs. That's not really how we um, look at it. Some people are like, hey, I need just a body. I need an FTE to help me with tag management services to create new tags, implement new tags, create a process. Um, that's something that you know we do, um, but we don't necessarily always think about it in an FTE format, like full-time employee. We think about it more of what are your needs and what are your goals in the upcoming year? And we put together what we call a project management timeline of saying, here are the steps that you need to take after we talk with all the key stakeholders across the different departments. Here are the steps that you need to take to achieve that great, amazing thing that where you want to be a year from now. And then we'll build that scope of work, build that partnership to make sure that we have the right resources aligned to it. And it becomes every week um, a team member from InfoTrust or another partner is meeting with your team and they're reporting back and they're delivering those deliverables that uh, we align was the right fit. A lot of times in that ongoing partnership, again, it can switch. Um, that deliverable can change as the business changes, but that's a very common practice. So those are the three buckets, licenses, projects, and ongoing partnerships.
That's great to hear. Thank you, Brad. Um, so you mentioned a variety of projects, right? Um, yep. <laughs> and we obviously know that there's a variety of products. Um, so I'm sure you have. <laughs> so I'm sure you have a lot of clients coming to you and saying, "Hey, I want to purchase analytics, and I want to purchase DB, and I want CRM, and I want it." everything <laughs> um <laughs> and so how do you really going about how do you go about assessing and really evaluating the true needs of the advertiser to really give them what they need and not necessarily what they want because those two things might not be the same 100 percent agree there's the people want a lot of really advance something they read in an article in ad age and then they realize that you know they want this but then at the same time they're saying well we don't really trust our data right so there is a process to kind of get to that ad age type article where you see something that looks really cool so really how we evaluate or understand our needs is obviously the, the easiest is just listen and understand what are the priorities of the organization? Uh, we make sure that we're meeting with multiple stakeholders, multiple different departments to you know, ask the questions like, what, what is needed? What are you looking for? Because to us, it's in, incredibly important for them and for us. Um, my job every single day is talking with organizations to say, what are your needs? And A, de determining if we're the right fit or passing them to another Google partner, right? We have to make sure that we're the right fit for that business. That's why I encourage everyone to always look at multiple partners to make sure that you're, you're getting a good sample of the industry and making sure you have the right one for you. Um, so once you, once you really understand that there is a fit, then it just comes down to making sure that um, when you're understanding the needs is, okay, let's talk through the organization. Um, so the six P's that I mentioned, so think about um, what are the platforms they're using? What's their purpose? What people do they have in place? Um, what's the profit? How do we get ROI out of this relationship? Like really walking through the fundamentals of the organization and what they're set up for. Another big thing, like what people do they have? We can go through, do a ton of great work, but if they don't have a developer to make some changes to the back end of their site based on what we did, then it's going to be a failed project. It's going to sit there and delayed. We've done everything we can do, but they need resources from them. So I think it's um, that that's a big one. It's understanding the organization and making sure that they have internally what needs to be done to make this um, a successful partnership. Two is I make sure I bring in my team members. So we have data scientists, data engineers, consultants. I got to bring them in because I don't have the technical skill set that they do. I'm not in the systems like they are. So I got to make sure that what's being asked, hey, we want our data to connect to this platform. We want it all to go in a big query. We want a dashboard. Our engineers got to take a look at that and say, well, based on what you're using, this isn't possible. Here's our recommendation. So again, bring additional teams um, and then once we have gathered all that information, we present back what we believe is the right recommended approach based on scope, timeline, and that is really the purpose to make sure we're aligned on both ends to say, yep, this actually is exactly what we are looking for. The deliverables are exactly what we want. Success a year from now is what I want to take to my leadership team. And once that process is done, it's, it's cruising to the paperwork, the fun stage procurement, and uh, starting the engagement. So evaluating is a lot of, it's a lot of upfront work. Um, some folks try to shortcut and just say, hey, sign here and we'll go get it done. And that, that crashes many times. Not only crashes for your new partner, but if I would, if I would bring something in it's, and it's something that we don't do, my team would quickly hate me because their job is to deliver on it. So it's just incredibly to spend the right amount of time um, evaluating the advertiser's needs and making sure that um, it's possible what they're asking. That's great. Thank you for clarifying, Brad. Um, I have a few more questions for you, but first I do see that there is a question that popped up in the chat. Uh, right. So if you wanted to become a partner, which of the three buckets that you mentioned, analytics partner, cloud partner, or media partner would be a great place to start? Great question. Um, I would say, so when we talk about either of those three, the first place to start is to get company certified. Um, so that entails passing the exams that we mentioned with five full-time employees in that region, at least, uh, and then providing some project samples. So really it depends on 
you know, what are you already working on? Are you already working on measurement? Are you working on media only, maybe as an agency? Um, and, or do you work across the spectrum of media and measurement? Um, so I'd say, what is your focus to start? Um, and then where do you wanna be, right? Because you can continue to, to build on those competencies. Um, it's not just a one and done thing. So, you know, focus on what's right for your business. Um, and then where you want to be strategically. So if you're already focused on measurement, maybe you can start with the uh, analytics company certification and get uh, certified in analytics and then build upon that and really uh, build up a center of excellence at your company and learn the media side of the house. Um, and then also get certified on media so that you really can talk to uh, the full stack of products. Um, and that actually, I do want to caveat, um, as we mentioned earlier, right, and I think Brad will get into more detail regarding our partner ecosystem. So InfoTrust, for example, is uh, heavily focused on measurement. So they don't sell media. Well, that means that they don't sell media like display and video uh, and campaign manager. It does not mean that they're not competent in it. So they actually have gone through company certification for all Google marketing uh, platform products. Um, so that is a prerequisite for any sales partner, even if they're not selling that particular product. Um, so just want to make you clear on that. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great point because many of our work that we do with our partners is re-architecting campaign manager, how to set up um, different media programs. So you're absolutely right. I mean, our team is it's, it's literally, they're just not pressing buttons to sell media, but as far as understanding GMP, that's to your that's a prerequisite because it's hard to work within any Google platform or product without having a very solid understanding of the ecosystem, especially in the verticals that we play in, in retail, consumer packaged goods, and more of the media news, news media. Absolutely, um, and, and it looks like April has another question. Um, April has a question. Can you start with just a few employees being certified or does the entire company need to be certified? Great question, April. Um, so the requirement is actually only five full-time employees in that region. Um, and so when we say region, right, uh, InfoTrust and Broad will probably get into this, um, they're certified in a few different regions. So um, in the U.S., in their headquarters in Cincinnati, Ohio, they are certified, meaning they have at least five full-time employees certified um, and they're also certified in other regions and other countries such as Barcelona and Dubai um, and meaning that they can you know deliver services in those regions so the minimum requirement is five full-time employees however we do see that you know if you want you want more than five people at your company to pass the exams I mean sure you know like have them take the training and get educated and upskilled um and if they pass those exams then then great right then you have your whole company upskilled on these great products and even if they're not selling them or they're not actually doing the work they can talk to a lot of you know um, the the narrative around the product so i think it's a good best practice um you know to get more than five certified if if you think that that's something that you want for your company. And yeah, let's great question. Get, yeah, really good question. Um, so let's get back to more questions for you, Brad. You're not the hook yet. <laughs> so let's get <laughs> into <laughs> let's get into what everybody's asking, right? Is so how does pricing work? Tell us a little bit about pricing. Yeah, pricing is simple. There's no, I mean, when it comes to a license, pricing is what it is, right? There's pricing for the annual Google licenses. So for example, the enterprise license of GA360, Google Analytics 360 is $150,000 a year. That's the starting price. And then it kind of goes up from there based on the monthly hits that you have. But it's easy to think about pricing in two buckets, very similar to how our engagements work. So if it's a project it's really scoping that out it's bringing in the resources on the partners end that have the technical skill set to actually understand what is it going to take to make this happen um, so a recent project that we're working on is um, building a customer lifetime value analysis for a high-end set of beauty brands 
So in order to do that, we had to bring in engineers, we had to bring in data scientists, we had to understand how their data is today, um, where they want the data to live, um, the timeline for us to run multiple different models um, to find um, their best customers, and then to present back. So our team is taking all of that information after they're asking a bunch of questions, and they're going back and saying, all right, we estimate that it's going to take this long, and here is the estimate. So our team is calculating what's the time it's going to take, how many resources am I going to have to use, and how quickly can I do this? So it could be one month, it could be a couple weeks, it could be three months. Something as simple as dashboarding, we can turn around, you know, we can start tomorrow, but something like customer lifetime value, there may be some things that the advertiser or the client needs to do first. So that's the first one is a project is typically scoped out and you're presented back with a timeline and a fixed cost. So we will, you wanted this, we will go do this and we will deliver it by here and you will pay X. From the, the other way or the, the other kind of pricing model is more back to that ongoing, which is typically a monthly investment that your organization will be making to partner with InfoTrust or another partner for the course of the year. So typically those engagements, <clears throat> they're a minimum of an annual engagement and they're very specific and customized to your business. So um, there, look, we could be your license owner, training partner, um, implementation partner, tag management services, cloud partner, a lot of different things within the, that analytics spectrum, um, that maturity framework as you think about where organizations are at. So those are very customized and you don't have to be in, you don't have to be using Google Analytics 360. We have many partners that are on the free version and they use us to be their extension of their team for dashboarding, strategy, um, tag management work. Hey, when a media organization comes in, can you help us implement the tags? Um, or, hey, we need help with uh, monitoring our governance to make sure no tags that aren't approved by our legal teams show up. So again, those are really the basic ways is you got license fees, you have project fees, and then you have the ongoing reoccurring. And all of those are very customized to what, what's best for your, for the organization. Thank you, Brad. Um, so I guess out of that, if if clients or prospective clients had to keep a few things in mind in terms of best practices, so can you just call out a few of those? Yes, this is a very good good question and good good push. I think this is a something that every organization should be thinking about. So number one, when you're bringing on a partner, don't work in isolation. If you're an analytics person, talk to your marketing team, talk to your IT team. You may already have a partner that could do the same services that you're looking to sign up for. Um, be honest with your own organization. Do a self-assessment. What do you need? Don't pretend that you're really good at something when you know if you talk to anybody else in the organization, they would say it's a complete disaster. Um, I say that in a nice way. It just happens quite a bit. Um, communication, just communicate um, with the partner and internally to make sure that everybody's expectations are the same. Uh, make sure that you have leadership involved in those final calls where you're presenting the proposal. Don't just work by yourself and then you leave tomorrow and then the organization's confused about what InfoTrust is doing. So make sure you involve a collective team. On that same note, anytime you bring in a partner, have someone dedicated to that partnership. If you don't put ownership on your end to own the relationship with this partner, then you're not gonna have the priority on it. And the partner is going to keep knocking doors. The meetings are going to keep getting canceled. And then three months later, you're going to be like, well, what's going on? Why are we paying InfoTrust? When at the end of the time, our team's been begging for time to show you all this work they've been doing to talk about future priorities. So that's just a couple that um, come to mind. Um, the last thing I would say is don't focus on price alone. There's way too many, especially in this partner ecosystem, there's way too many organizations that are only looking at the price and they're not considering anything else. And more often than not, when an organization, um, more often than not, like if we're in, uh, you know, we're going for an organization's business and, you know, price is the only reason, typically that organization is coming back a year later saying, we're not happy, we're not getting what we need because it was only focused around price. If prices are being cut across the board and you're getting a really good deal, that basically means you may not be getting the support that you need. It may be very reactive, very like help desk, um, not strategy or proactive forward thinking, which is how we operate at InfoTrust. 
So there's just a couple. Hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Brad. Um, and I would love to hear your point of view on a client having multiple partners. So as we mentioned, um, InfoTrust specifically um, doesn't resell the media, but you resell measurement and you really work across the stack. So if a client has, for instance, an agency that they work with already, how do you go about you know, working alongside that agency and working with the client to really focus on uh, the success of the client? What's your POV on clients having multiple partners? Yeah, so to answer your first question, as far as um, you know, what are those things for evaluation or what are those criteria, we have a great article, infotrust.com slash resources. It's basically, it's around the Google Analytics 360 license but it talks through, um, one, of our, one of my colleagues wrote it, it's very in-depth and detailed to really think about a partner and the things that you should be considering. So regardless whether it's for a license or not, very detailed, but high level on what that article kind of entails is, you know, will you have a dedicated team? You know, will you have someone that's meeting with you regularly or is this just something where you have to email them and reach out, you have to file a ticket? Um, two is look at the innovation of the organization. Are they innovating? Are, are they coming out with some advanced items? Like um, do they have a lot of articles, blog posts on new features that Google's releasing? Do they seem like experts? So look at the content they're producing, the webinars they're doing, the resources they're providing, the thought leadership. You know, Are, are they publishing outside of just their website? Um, where are their teams at? Because it's a really, um, it can help you guide of like, how invested this partner is in growing with you and investing with you and giving you that competitive edge. Client success team, I know one thing that we really harp on at InfoTrust is we have a whole client success team. They're not in delivery, they're not in sales or partnerships. Their job is to make sure we're exceeding expectations. So that kind of goes in like quarterly business reviews, um, check-ins to make sure how's everything going? How's the team doing? Is there a need to adjust something? So that's a really, um, those are some key areas. Um, is the is the work being outsourced or is it being done in-house? It's, uh, we in-house all of our work, all of our partnerships, they're all InfoTrust full-time employees, but you know, are they using contractors? Are they outsourcing? It's just some good, that, that may be fine, I'm not saying this in a negative way, it's just things you have to consider as an organization as you're going through it. And then the final thing is just the more strategic guidance and like vertical expertise. So if you're a retailer, it's probably helpful, maybe not in every situation, but it's probably helpful to have an organization like InfoTrust that works with some of the top retailers in the world because they're gonna have some insights, they're gonna have some data, they're gonna have some best practices to share and immediately upskill your team, which is a really big deal of any partner is. If you have a partner today that's not making your team stronger and upskilling your team, and it's probably not a great partner because that's that's the point, right? Is if you're doing very entry level stuff today, you sign a partner. A year from now, your team's doing that entry level stuff, and the partner is further along in that maturity framework. And then, Laura, your uh, question on point of view of multiple partners. Um, I don't think it's an issue. Like for example, we work very well with media agencies because we're not a threat that we're going to go try to steal the media business. So. Multiple partners are not an issue as long as you're talking cross organization about the partners you have. We have, uh, we've worked with organizations in the past that have so many partners that they're confused about what each partner does. That's a problem. That, that's when it becomes too many partners. But I would say in general, just make sure that any new partner you're bringing on is complementing your organization, right? You have a media partner. They're really good at media. They may not be great at cloud they may not be great at analytics um, in in as depth as you want so make sure the partner you're bringing on um, has that analytics expertise and your partners can work well together to bring the best out of your organization so Lori, i'm going to push it back to you now because uh, we have a couple minutes left again we are fine to switch the questions too so let us know the final section we're going to focus on is um, from Lori's standpoint, what are those recommendations for evaluating Google Partner? You heard from me, um, I am a partner, so I wanted to hear like Google's point of view. So um, please feel free to, I'll mix in some questions that we have coming in and from the questions that I prepared. But, you know, Lori, what are some, 
recommendations on how you evaluate Google partnerships? Um, just like what are some key items that you're in? I think that's a good question to end on. Yeah, I would say um, just with any partnership, right? It's, I mean, for, for one, taking out uh, all the tech and everything considered expertise, but do you get along with the partner? Because it's gonna be a relationship and you might sign a contract and work with them for six months or six years. So when do you like them? And do you wanna to talk to them on a regular basis? Um, that should definitely be a consideration, of course. Um, because it's a partnership and that goes two ways, right? Um, and that truly is what it should be with working with a partner. It shouldn't just be signing a contract and, you know, um, getting a project done, but they really want to focus on uh, success for, for you. Um, and so uh, definitely take that into consideration. I would say too, right, is vertical expertise. A lot of our partners, including InfoTrust, um, really specialize in a certain vertical. So um, InfoTrust, you know, while they have expertise and capabilities across uh, the full stack and can do this work across any vertical or any type of business, uh, they have a lot of great use cases around, uh, you know, multinational, large, CPG, consumer packaged goods uh, clients, a lot of retail clients, news and media. Uh, so, you know, ask your partner if they have any use cases or case studies published or thought leadership on the vertical uh, uh, specifics that they can share with you uh, around what they've done for other clients. Um, another one would be differentiation. You know, like, uh, as I mentioned, all of our partners are certified across the stack. Uh, but a lot of them really differentiate themselves in a, a few services that they're really, really, really strong at. Um, and I, I would say, you know, if I took a look at InfoTrust, um, where they really stand out is around data governance and uh, C4M. Um, so those advanced measurement uh, tactics and strategy, which is further along the uh, maturity framework. Um, so just look at the, the services that they offer. Um, and then I would say geographical location definitely comes into play, right? Um, if we do talk about the partnership and, you know, you interacting on a regular basis, I think it is important to have a partner where someone is close by um, and also someone that you can talk to on a regular basis if you are having issues. Um, so I think all things being considered, like those are a few things that you can take into consideration aside from just the price tag, right? Um, because you do want it to be a long-term investment um, and not just a, a tr transaction. Yeah, thanks, Lori. And we had a couple questions come in. I can answer them quickly, I believe. Um, for, so how does the paperwork work um, for a Google license with a partner? Um, this is a question that comes up a ton. Um, the paperwork is directly with the partner itself, um, but then obviously the partner has a you know, reselling license with Google, right? So all of the paperwork that you use will be directly with a partner, but keep in mind, a lot of the same TNCs for the Google products and platforms, that partner has to, like we're not able to change the Google Analytics uh, TNCs, unfortunately. So that's something just to keep in mind is uh, many organizations will ask us, be like, well, we don't, we don't like the SLA on this, you know? If it's our service, then that's 100% fine, but we cannot determine how often Google Analytics is up, like the uptime, right? That's something that Google makes a decision on and it's very hard, if not impossible, to adjust um, those terms and conditions. Another item we had was resources. So while Lori was going through the last question, I sent out two links. One is a amazing Google public resource that um, about Google marketing partners and a lot of the resources that are there. I also sent a link to our InfoTrust page where um, infotrust.com slash resources that has a ton of information. Lori can probably, Lori's probably getting tired of me sending her different links to resources and webinars and, and blogs, but um, we have a COVID-19 resource center that just talks about everything from how to better work from home um, to we have a webinar this afternoon. You're all welcome to join with the founder of George Remus Bourbon. We have one coming up on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we're having a comedian join. So Business related and non-business related, we're here for our partners, um, our advertisers, clients, potential clients. Um, we know it's a challenging time personally and professionally for everyone. So thank you for the time today. Thank you for spending 
a full hour with us and we're excited to take next steps and, and hear from you. So Lori, I, I'm sure like us, you're always available for questions, um, thoughts, feel free to follow up um, with our team and just excited about helping all the organization and audiences better use Google product platforms and you know drive the business and gain that competitive edge. Lori, thank you. You've been amazing. I wish my backdrop was as cool as you. You got some nice roses back there. Um, I have a reds light. You know, I'm kind of disappointed the reds did not get to play right now, but keep in perspective. So thank you for your time today and really appreciate the partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your great questions and thanks everyone for attending the webinar. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Um, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay sane. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.